tout de suite se mettre ça. That's an easy fix. I had Discord muted via OBS. Ah. You also seem slightly quieter than normal, but. I have problems, Shen. I can't open this meat because opener is awkward. Yeah, you definitely sound quiet on stream. You sound quiet on stream too? God damn. I don't know. Let's uh, let's see. Get someone else's opinion because my audio might be off. Okay. Well, none none of the usuals who would tell us are here. So, <laughs> let me go grab my other. Ice coffee. Uh, hot and iced. Interesting mix. Everybody says it's fine. It's probably you. I got mead that's called Ginger Dragon. I left my drinks in the fridge. Want to go grab them? Maybe after stream. Okay. We got maps. Shit, we do have maps. All right. Oh god, that's good. Uh, <laughs> that perks me right up. Hold on a tick. What? What's the? Uh, what, what's this mead? Crafted. Uh, it's called artisan meadery. Uh, crafted. Ginger. Uh, ginger dragon. It's honey wine with ginger and hibiscus. Uh, doesn't sound great, but it, it's. I'll I'll it's trust you on it. I'm I'm not a fan of ginger beer. To be fair. It's not ginger beer. It's mead, but it's got ginger and hibiscus. So it's not Does it ginger taste beer. Like ginger though. No, it's it's. Okay. I can't I can't explain it. I'll have to try it. It's not like ginger ale or ginger beer. It's. I like ginger ale. It's the ginger beer. It's not ginger beer. It's it's mead. You could tell there's like honey wine. <laughs> you could tell there's honey in there. Is it is it like local to your area? No, I just, no, it shouldn't be. Ohio. It's closer to you than me, but not close to either of us. <laughs> from from the local area of Ohio. Uh, I'm not like ginger. I'm okay with, uh, especially like ginger ale and like ginger flavored things. Like even candied ginger isn't too bad, but there's a point of like almost too much ginger, and I find that gets like at that point gets hit all really fast in a lot of dishes. And particularly off, like if it's pure, like actual raw ginger and stuff, it's just it's really, really strong. Anyways, we should probably push the show live and get it going. We can talk about ginger in our map runs. Let me know, and I tweet. Mm, we go live. I'll meet you, so you can tweet. Today is April 6th, 2018. This is episode 75 of Maelstrom Radio. Let's try that again because I didn't have that shit ready. Today is April 6th, 2018. This is episode 75 of Maelstrom Radio.
Maelstrom Radio. With your hosts, Flattis and Shinder. And welcome everybody to Maelstrom Radio. My name is Flatus. With me, this host is on the West Coast, and his camera is slightly fucking ajar. God damn it! It's uh, Shin. Hi, Shin. Hi. It's uh, yeah. I'm kind of off to the side. I fixed you. You're better now. Let's try to fix this even more. You look good. You look good now. <laughs> You're there. It's all, it's all, it's all fucking coming up. We'll just, we'll just keep that. There we go. We're all good. Uh, so, uh, it's, dude, it's been a week. I'm off on Monday, so that's enough. <laughs> Plus, uh, it's always know, good. It means I could stay up late on Sunday and take part in shenanigans. What happens on Sunday nights exactly? Sleep. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh, I goofed. <laughs> goofed. Goofed hard then. Oh, well. Well, uh, well see, I guess. <laughs> right, everybody. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure we should just like pop in and start talking about like the important shit because we got like a hell of a lot of shit to talk about tonight. So, uh, news letter from the producer live 43 will be April 14th at 2 30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's going to be 5 30 Eastern. My time on a Saturday, and I'll be up watching that producer live. Probably streaming it. I won't. You won't be. I will be. Unless there's, well, I'm guessing it's gonna be 4.3 news. So yeah, I'll fucking be awake. I'll the catch question, it in the morning. The question is, do we do a show the night before, or say fuck it, we'll do the show live at 5:30 in the morning? As it's, I'm gonna say no because I'm not gonna be up at two thirty in the morning the night before I have a flight. Oh shit! Oh, that's right, you have a flight then. Yes, I'm flying out on the fifteenth. Ah, oh, fuck! That's right. You sure are. <laughs> guest hosts, guest hosts will be needed. Uh, let's see, the audio will be in Japanese only, as always, uh, you normally, you know, if you're in the know, you watch the Mr. Happy stream, uh, and, uh, he gets the information from, of course, the translators on Reddit, which is where I normally get my news. Reddit's usually useful, useful for some things, not all things. Of they course. usually have a live thread, uh, or sorry, usually. rather a live channel in Discord that gets uh, updated during the live yes. letter. Uh, and usually as as it goes is that the information is fairly on point, but there is always going backtracking and fixing and altering the uh, translations. So what you first initially hear is not always what you get. So uh, and my phone's way over there and it made a noise. God. Right. You know, fucking April Fool's Day, I guess, for talking about phones. <laughs> Shin, what happened on April Fool's Day? We got a lot of fun news on April Fool's Day. Uh, there was uh, the, the main one for 14, or the only one I should say for 14, was Final Fantasy 14 Go, a brand new mobile app for gathering in real life. Uh, you can take your app, you can go out into the real world, and you can furiously tap on your screen to gather your nodes. Uh, with this app, you could even get your own special mining tool edition, which you could use to uh, increase your gathering rate to, I believe it was a guaranteed gathering. Uh, also note that uh, Square Enix is not responsible for any damage to your phone if you attempt to do this. Uh, but really, they had a, a nice little YouTube video for it, which was kind of neat. Uh, it, not quite as... Uh, 
Yeah. I'd have to do it. Yeah. Divisive, yeah, I guess, as uh, last year's April Fool's joke with uh, Alexander Tactics, or Tactics Alexander, uh, which I still kind of really, really want. The 8-bit music was great. The 8-bit music was great. 8-bit music is always great from here. Uh, the 8-bit music was great this year, too. We just get 8-bit. I want an 8-bit music soundtrack. Well, just give me like I would a, love the chip tunes version of everything. Like if they we called higher chip tunes this time. If listen, if they would have told me, like they would have made an album called Kicking It Old School, and it was just like eight bit renditions of Final Fantasy fourteen music, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Maybe the new sections of Eureka could just have like chip tunes the whole time. Like, it's like chip tune orchestral roles. I don't know. Like the actual music in Eureka is just chip tunes. And we get a chiptune or crest funerals. Yes. Where I'm going with this? I mean, we have All primal right. or crest funerals already, so. Yeah, let's get some chiptune runs. Uh, speaking of kicking it, PAX East is going on right now. Final Fantasy XIV uh, is at PAX East. Not was, but is at PAX East again this year. Uh, giving away foam swords, challenging people to defeat Bayaku at their battle challenge, and hosting a story and writing panel featuring main scenario writer. Natsuko Ishikawa and English localization lead John Crow. Was I right about the name? Am I on it? No? I think so. All right. I, I was answering questions in chat. Sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's Natsuko Ishikawa. So. Ko, but yes. Ko? Wait. Natsuko. But I fucking... Yeah. I probably nailed it the first time. We'll anyway. Yeah, it's gonna. I don't know. I I I want to see where they're. I, if they do a Q and A, it'd be interesting what people ask if it's specifically about story. I I want to know if anybody's gonna raise their hand and be like four point one. Um, I thought that Nanamo and Robon were in love, and clearly Nanamo let Robon go, and that is. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for that clip. But uh. As far as I know, Emmy is not attending PAX East, so it's we should not, be okay. Not not happening. So, uh, so should, we're, our show's a bit different tonight. It's definitely the 75th episode. It is. It is it's, that. It's a new milestone. It is. We're getting old. 25 episodes until 100. It's not getting. But you know what that means, though? And now for something completely different. It's, it's time for something completely different. So this that episode... Michael Bay had some help there. Is it Michael Bay? That's not Michael Bay. That's Sean Cleese. No, nah, it's time with the explosion. Oh, that's Michael Bay. Uh, so in, in, in true Maelstrom fashion, keeping it fresh, um, we decided to take a step back and because uh, there wasn't a whole lot of Final Fantasy XIV news, we could discuss Eureka still if we really wanted to, but there's not much going on there. We could discuss the little interview that, he, that Yoshi P did about Eureka, but it's kind of stuff rather Shin and I already talked about and, and knew that was probably coming. So if you listen to one of our old shows, Shin and I are geniuses. Hey, Pilatus. Is Pazuzu up? Pazuzu. Pazuzu's always up. Did, was I supposed to get something for Pazuzu? No, just that seems to be what everyone is regurgitating over and over. Oh, it's Pazuzu up. I should, I should, you know what I should have got from fucking uh, Futurama is uh, the professor screaming up Pazuzu. <laughs> that I, I didn't. That's actually worthwhile for the soundboard. Yeah. You know what I didn't get though? I didn't get a fuck you. It's April. God damn it. That's wow. a, that's so unfortunate. All right, it's not officially April yet, so it's not a yeah, it's not April. That's that's unfortunate. It's really you know, I got I got this though. Get in touch with your wizard. Get in touch with your wizard. I'm getting in touch with something else tonight. Yeah, we're gonna get in touch with our other MMOs. Uh, so we're talking other MMOs and their coming features in the and the future of the MMO landscape because. If you are a person who doesn't play MMOs a whole lot and Final Fantasy XIV is your first MMO, this is what we call competition. 
competition in the MMO space has always been going on. Uh, WoW has always been the the uh, since it knocked EverQuest off the throne. I would say it's always been kind of like the figurehead, the the king of the castle. Uh, but a lot of these uh, MMOs now are not trying to copy WoW anymore. Like they're trying to actually carve out their own space and say, "Hey, listen, we may be niche or we may be doing this, and it's it is truly different." So, if that's the case, shouldn't I uh, compiled a, a small list? Now, this list, in by no means, is all of what's coming out in the future of the MMO space. We just took the specific ones that we felt that were doing some really interesting and new, new things. Um, and we're going to talk about that. So we're going to start with Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Uh, this is Brad McQuaid, the, uh, one of the original creators of EQ1 and Vanguard. Uh, and it's currently in pre-alpha testing. And in Shin, th this is essentially a call back to, to challenging MMO content. Something that we see currently in Eureka. Uh, I do want to put that caveat again that every time we talk about Eureka and bring it back to this like classic uh, sort of MMOs, uh, Eureka really doesn't do the same sort of thing as these old games. Like if you try to go back right now and play EQ1. Uh, or other games from that era, I, I'm kind of blanking on the other ones around there because I know Vanguard's not up anymore, neither is uh, Star Wars Galaxies, which are the, the major ones that I knew of from a little bit older. Uh, yeah, they, those games really don't kind of compare to what we have in Eureka, and I'm hoping that they don't really compare to what we're getting here with things like Pantheon or some of the other games that we're talking here. Uh, I mean, it's classically spirited as you as you wrote and it is a spirit technically it is a spiritual successor to eq1 and vanguard i think the primary focus of this uh primary it's primarily pve but the focus in on the, and the challenging part is the social part it's uh it is a very they're driving this to be a very social mmo this is going to be one of those games where it's like you, you need a, some contents two players some contents three to five players and and that's the driving force that, that you can't just go out on your own. You will die. Uh, and and death is a I don't know if they said death has consequence in this in Pantheon yet, but I'm sure knowing Brad McQuaid, it's it's. I believe that they've talked about uh, XP loss and de leveling as part of this. But I don't know if that's still the case. But yeah, they've definitely tried to capture that whole audience that that it's a very very niche concept i guess but there's is a, a very strong community that you can see going from game to game to game especially during pre-release uh, and leading up to launches that is very community focused very uh much very vocal about wanting some of these old school experiences that they have and i have a strong feeling that a lot of that is uh nostalgia and looking through the past uh with rose colored glasses like being able to or looking at what used to be and romanticizing it to a point where it's so amazing but they forget all of the terrible things that they used to have to deal with back then things like having to spend 30 minutes trying to walk across the world in order to get to a new place or having to wait an hour for the boat to come or dying and losing three days worth of work yeah. stuff like that does, kind of gets ignored for stuff like oh things were challenging so I'm, pantheon seems to kind of be addressing that need and that they're trying to bring back that sort of challenge and difficulty within a game uh but in a, in a much more modern format so we get updated graphics updated ui updated gameplay uh some kind of cool classes like i know that uh, pantheon is trying to do a dual targeting system kind of like vanguard did uh so that you could have I don't know if they're actually going to do this in Pantheon, but I know Vanguard had a really cool class called the Blood Mage, where you could have one offensive target and one defensive target, and you would actually be able to steal life from your offensive target and heal uh, your defensive target. So having gameplay mechanics like that were kind of cool. Uh, and I, it, I think they're trying to bring back that while trying to remove a lot of the downsides that players Downs, don't remember. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I'll be, it'll be interesting to try, like, but right now to ge to even get into pre-alpha testing, to the buy-in for that is a 
thousand dollars currently. To be fair, like this is pre-alpha testing. Judging by their plan, there's still a few 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 years out. Sorry, uh, from actually launching this game, they're going through a pre-alpha. There will be an alpha. There will be a closed beta. There'll be an open beta, likely, and then there'll be, of course, the live production version. I would see. So, like, uh, I would Anyone think at this point, right alpha is, and beta, or at least closed beta, would probably be hitting by end of year. Uh, it's possible. I don't know. I haven't actually paid attention to their timeline so much. Um, mm. But like, especially with pre-alpha, like this is very much not let's go try out the game, which a lot of people tend to use alphas and betas for. This is for actual testing. So if you are interested in doing that, like it, it isn't just you get to go and play this game. It's you're probably doing work here. The game is not going to work how you want it to. It's going to be clunky. There's going to be tons of bugs. It's going to look terrible compared to what the final version will be. Like they don't have art assets and you're just finding a gray block and you're like, die block. Well, there's usually art assets, but they're usually like generic or they might not be animated fully. It's like you might have like store-bought trees or something as opposed to trees that are specifically sculpted for your environment, for your area kind of thing. Paper cut, cardboard cut on some trees just lining the woods. You're like, wait a minute. All right, well, <clears throat> let's move on to something that's a little, a little more out of the ordinary. Chronicles of Illyria. Still under development. Uh, there's no character levels, but there is a skill tree. But what's what's the big thing with the Chronicles of Lyria? Shin, like the big draw for somebody coming in or looking for an MMO in the future landscape. I know what it is. I I know you know what it is because you're excited about it. I'm I'm trying to tweet out stuff as we go as well too, but. Uh... Uh... Yeah, I was kind of debating if I should put this one this early. I figured leaving with Pantheon and, and Chronicles of Valeria were kind of a little bit more information here because this is one that I've been kind of following. And full disclosure, I have backed a couple of the things we're talking about today. Uh, so Chronicles of Valeria, their kind of draw, I guess, is, is the player life cycle. They don't have uh, a character per se like there's there's no levels there's no uh class you're you're not really like it's not like your traditional mmo you don't go in with a character that you're going to have forever and you don't have a class or something that you're going to do all the time it what they're going to do actually is have uh your character ages and dies that's that's kind of the big thing that happens and your uh, playtime, I believe, is linked to the life of this character. So you can actually, if you purchase your, your Spark of Life, uh, it's for one character's length. Every time that you uh, die, I'm using air quotes in this specifically because there are three different types of death in this game. Uh, two of them, when you die, uh, you can come back, but it will reduce your overall lifespan. But the third death is actually a full permanent death. You can just die and not come back. Uh, but uh, in this case, whenever you like your whole life is you're basically your subscription. So you pay for uh, your lifetime, which is one spark of life. When your character dies, then you need another one. I can't remember exactly how long uh, this is, but I believe uh, it's about 52 weeks is the theoretical maximum that you can have a character. So you'd be able to have a character for at most one year uh, in time. But this doesn't mean that you can't uh, continue building on your character. Like your character. Uh, can pass on their legacy uh, to children or to other uh, characters. So for example, uh, you can get married in the game, you can have children in the game, uh, or you can choose to spawn as like a, a ward of the state. So you don't like really have parents, you get a little bit more customization options, but you're not part of like this family or this whole group. Uh, and where this kind of, uh, yeah, one of those things would be like, you could have a kid in the game and that kid will become uh, your could become your next player character and would inherit traits from your previous one. Uh, so that's kind of the interesting thing with this uh, is that whole life cycle system. And I'm not explaining it the best, uh, but it is really really interesting. And and it kind of plays into with how they're 
doing this political system where they're actually going to have the whole world be something that the players can create. So I'm thinking that this game is going to be a very, very uh, role-playing based game. A lot of it's going to be player driven. A lot of it's going to depend on the community. So it's going to have to have that strong community aspect, kind of like Pantheon does, but in a different way in that you, the community has to work together to kind of achieve these things. Uh, they, they have mentioned that this game is primarily PVE. You can kill people. It is like a PVP. You can actually do that sort of thing, kill people, work against people, but it's illegal. There are laws in the world. You will have consequences. Uh, but going back to this political system, uh, even with the, the tiers right now that you can purchase for everything, they have uh, basically plots of land that you can have. So you can be the king of an entire region. You can be uh, a duchess, a duke, uh, a lord, a lady, whatever. Like you can have multiple levels of the spectrum and you can have your serfs. They will pay your taxes or they will pay taxes to you. You have to then, you can use that money to just hoard it or you can use it to reinvest or whatever. But basically you have this whole caste system of uh, different levels and, and hierarchies and kingdoms that you can either, like, you can basically do whatever you want with. So now, it, it's kind of interesting in that you have these different things and they can kind of play with each other. They can play against each other. You can go to war. You can try to take out the king. You can like do whatever you want there. And, but like, that's kind of how it comes back. So like if you're the king, for example, you have a kid, you can pass on your legacy and continue being the king as you go on, or you can abdicate or you can pass it on to someone else as like your heir. Uh, but that whole thing plays into the entire like basis of this game. I'm gonna make a character named Henry become king. I'll let you know. I'll let you figure out how that plays out. There are many ways that that one can go. <laughs> uh, so, but the one of the cool parts of this game that it's not only that reoccurring life cycle, but also your character is ingrained in the world. It's you don't just log out and your character disappears. You become your character becomes an offline player character. Your character still does stuff in the world. It'll it'll make progress. You'll set it to do things while you're gone, and when you come back, it will have done that stuff, and it will have interacted with other NPCs and other players. And you'll and it's it's the the world does. It's not like in Final Fantasy or other MMOs where you log out, the world still kind of goes on, but you're not there. You log out, your character's still in there, and the world does continue to go on. But when you come back, things have happened. <laughs> Right. It, it kind of makes it really interesting in that you can continue playing when you're not there. And of course, that's probably going to be limited to certain actions. You're not going to be able to go and say, raid all of the other nearby towns when you're offline. Uh, but stuff like crafting and, and building things or stuff, that, that sort of thing could happen or trading even. Uh, a lot of MMOs uh, historically have had like trading systems where you have to stay logged in you set up a little shop and people can come and visit you so it's kind of an extension of that i guess i don't have a phone line anymore i just have that one line where my online character stays in town for trade <laughs> uh so dating I dating ourselves i guess <laughs> i sold my leather belt yes Good reasons why I had so many hours played. I think I had almost like 300 days played on one of my characters. In EQ? In EQ2. Because it was goes. old enough that it was back when you had to stay logged in all the time. Stay so. in, so. <laughs> I was like one of 20 some odd characters, so. It's getting, it was real, it was real back then. I, now, what do you think of this whole, like, no character levels, no classes, but having a skill tree and having roles. Like, how do you think that system is going to kind of work? It's going to, it's definitely going to increase the, the, so in MMO, right, right. So like now, like when I level up a character, like it's, it's a grind, right? Like I, my, my concern isn't the, how, how important this level is to me. It's how important it is to get to the final level so I can start doing the stuff that the end game is. There are no levels here, so everything technically is available to me to start doing and working on and leveling or not leveling, but to to gain skill and 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 they all have some sort of purpose. the The question here is: is uh, will it, it push me into doing something that I don't normally do in other MMOs? Will it push me into like actually kind of RPing, like being the king, being a serf, being this? 
considering you can't be some like evil shadowy knight person that goes around and has like this dark aura going off of them mm -hmm. probably will be something new okay King Henry. although i do see that there are uh, deviant skills oh sweet <laughs> can't wait i'm actually look, kind of looking forward to the bardic skill tree i kind of want to see the entertainer thing or where you just like hang out in taverns and play music yeah all right but you yeah, know i'm down I mean, survival bardic like I, I could get behind something like this where I could just kind of like go into the forest and live off the land kind of thing. Seems like it would be kind of fun to, to do that sort of character. I just want to, I want to be that weird guy that lives in the woods and just like, ha ha. <laughs> like, You're going to be the, the, the old little hermit dude. Yeah. Just be like, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this. <laughs> we need to do that now. We need to find a cave you need to level up blacksmithing and just be this really old dude in a cave who gives out swords to new adventurers and says it's dangerous to go alone. Just take this. We are doing this when this game launches. <laughs> Character name is Old Man. <laughs> what did you do for the first four hours of Chronicles of Lyria? Leveled up blacksmith and became the old man and just handed out swords to new adventurers. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. I, as hilarious as that would be, though, I, I think like this game would be really interesting in that sense. Like I remember way, way back when your reputation on a server mattered. Like You suddenly got blacklisted for being an idiot and you were not welcome to do anything on that server. Everyone knew who you were and no one would group with you anymore or play with you, which severely limited it and your only cho choices were really start a new character or move off of the server. So things like this, like where you do have an identity, you do have uh, a server community to kind of work with, it's going to be interesting to see like, if you, people get reputations and you start figuring out who people are and, and what they're doing and you know kind of who to avoid or, or who, to, who will kind of help. You kind of get that community back where you'd be like, oh yeah, like so-and-so can go and make these swords for you or like, hey, this person really needs some uh, bear meat. Oh, fuck. Someone's Christ. looking for some rat pelts. Look at a rat pelt. Fuck me! If there, if, if if I start Chronicles of Lair, it's a goddamn bear quest, and it's like here's this. I know it won't be. I know there won't be that quest where it's like here's well, this melon baller. It, it might. Oh, I don't want to. Like well, the, but it makes sense. Like it, one of the things that they did post on it is that their quests are going to be what NPCs actually need. So the NPCs are going to have some sort of hierarchy of needs, where it'll be like, hey, we need food, we need shelter, we need materials. To, to do whatever they're doing. A butcher will need meat. A blacksmith will need metal or ore. See that, to, me, to me, that makes sense. It's not like right. random, like, like NPC Jeff is like, here's this melon baller, go pluck out fucking berries. Is... No, I, I'm pretty sure we're not going to have to do that. Unless it's a new delicacy, in which case I really feel sorry for crafters. Ugh. <laughs> so I, and they do have a, a set of roles. Like, we don't have class, though. Oh no. <laughs> Brown eye pie. Oh, where did we go wrong? <laughs> it, turned, it turned so quick. Can I name the episode Brown Eye Pie? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> but, like, so, and going back to this, we also said there's no classes with here, but they have these roles. Um, which I don't really know how they're going to work. Like the skills we know, uh, there are six different types of skills that you can get, uh, and each of them have a number of skills within them, or like six different categories of skill, I should say, and, you can, and all of them are open from the beginning. You can start leveling whatever you want. Uh, but you also have these different roles. So there, there's four main roles that they have in here. A champion who's effectively kind of like your adventurer, they're going to go and make the places safer. Uh, you have explorers who I'm pretty sure that's self-explanatory. If you don't know what an explorer is, you should probably go check out the dictionary. Uh, you have producers who are kind of like your crafters. They're going to be the ones who will give you your swords, your armor, your uh, gear and all of this. And then you're going to have your suppliers who are going to be kind of like your, your gatherers, your merchants. 
uh, people who will get supplies and will be they'll be trading for things. They'll be kind of uh, building up the economy, kind of. They're the ones that are going to kind of facilitate a lot of that. And you can kind of be multiple of these roles and you can kind of specialize in them as well, but it kind of classifies where your kind of play style is going to be. And I already know where mine's going to be out of these four because uh, the I really I, like exploring. I was going to say in the tavern. <laughs> yeah, between, uh, I mean, it'll probably be like somewhere with the champion and explorer. I'm not so much into the crafting or gathering, but I might do a little bit, but most of the time it's probably going to be going out to the world and seeing what's there and then reporting back. That happens. Uh, so I, I will say this, it's, it's an inter- it's going to be an interesting concept when it all, co- like, because it needs to be cohesive, right? It's not like anything before, like it need, really does need to be a cohesive, like, like farmers will help, you know, supply feed to cattle, cattle supply meat for the butcher. Like it's going to be a cohesive world and, and servers and it's going to be an interesting game when it comes out. Speaking of interesting, Ashes of Creation. Uh, I just I, I did talk to uh, our one of my former co-hosts, uh, Lucy. She is at PAX. Uh, I messaged her uh, and talked to her a little bit about Ashes of Creation. She stood in line for a long time to play the the what they had there to test. Um, and what Ashes of Creation is doing is that they're using what's I did a whole, we, you know, Shin and I met through uh, EverQuest Next and, and, you know, him him doing background work for EQ Nexus. Yeah, right? and, but Ashes of Creation is kind of going along that path of a pillar system, kind of taking some of the ideas from EverQuest Next, or maybe they already had them in place when this was going on, uh, and, and kind of using that to build their game. One of the things they're doing is called a, the node system. Where if you're questing, if a lot of you uh, people on the server are questing in one area, the node builds up. So it may start off as a camp. As you're doing more quests, more quests will open. The camp will become uh, a small village and the village will grow into a town. The town will grow into a city and so on and so forth. And the questing, it might open new dungeons. That all changes. And that can change based on server to server. Some servers may not be in that one node. They may be on the west coast of of the continent growing that node and that'll be a totally different set of quests totally different set of dungeons and that's how they're kind of building their world that they want their servers to be unique to each player character you can make a character on one server it'd be totally different from the server and how that's going from where it is there uh see at thomas and uh and check the the garrison quest line i don't want to say yes um, because it, it it's not the garrison quest line from WoW because it'll you can actually see change like I understand like he's what he's saying like change happens at the garrison quest line but it, if if every server is unique that you're never gonna have the same you it might not have two of the same server you can log on to like server A and everybody went up north and the server B everybody went south and it's called totally different totally different. Dungeons, quests, dragons, monsters appear, not appear. You might have ice giants up the north. You might have dragons in the south. And that's how the world will change and grow around you. Um, the questing is based on player choices on top of that, too. Like, if if where choice actually matters in this game, where other games is like, well, I'm going to hand in these bear pelts. <laughs> Everybody's going to hand in the bear pelts. Uh where you can choose not I to do a quilt though. Yeah, yeah, right. Where like also in EverQuest Next, where it was this thing where it's like choice mattered. It's they're also doing the same thing. Choice matters. Your choice will influence the the gaming world. Uh, you can choose to help the city or not. Go to a different node and say, no, I'm going to start to grow this township, and you can affect the other township because you're taking resources from them and changing the world effectively. Um, and on top of it, players need to work together because now not only you're going to have, you know, crafters needing to help uh, build up these towns and these nodes. You need adventurers to go out and quell the monsters. You're also going to have PvP. There's going to be potential that other factions or other people are going to grow up other nodes and want to seed yours and take your land <laughs> and take your take your goods. 
So to do that, players have to work together because there's caravans. You can set up trade routes. Uh, you can do, the, like I said, the sieges, and there's, like, big time crafting. Like, if you really want to, you know, to build up your township, your nodes, you're going to want to protect your crafters. Um, it's going to be one of those games where, yet again, that the focus is putting the focus back into that that multiplayer part of the MMO. Um, and so far, the first three games on this list have been that, like really focusing on the multiplayer part of MMO. It's not massively and not, not the, it's maybe not so much the massively part because we don't know how big in, in terms of player base will these be, but I would say anything over what a thousand players is pretty massive. Yeah. It's, for certain areas, especially it's, if they're concentrated in areas, it's a pretty good number. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit so, more iffy once you start spreading out or growing your world. Yeah, and and thinning out the player base. But, you know, if you're having this node system where people are being focused in the areas, it's a different story. So it is... It is uh... Go ahead. I was just going to say, especially with all three of these two, like they are very, very group-oriented and kind of almost similar in how they're approaching this in that uh, they all kind of want to have this whole player economy that they need to build. So you're going to have crafters who are going to be able to build things for you, whether it's uh, helping you build these cities, helping you uh, build fortifications, helping you build weapons, armor, uh, whatever. They're going to be helping uh, grow the entire world, uh, as well as outfitting players with things to do so that other people can go out and explore the world, who can go and defend the world, who can attack in the world. Uh, and they can kind of provide for that and then we also have the on the other side you have people who are harvesting gathering who are trying to get the materials so that the crafters can continue going and you have the adventures going out and getting materials for uh, the crafters to keep doing it so you get this whole player economy where everyone has to help each other in order to continue uh, working with it which i think is a really good idea uh, especially if you want to build a, a kind of a community around your game it does limit your game in that for forcing that sort of interaction kind of sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. There are issues with uh, players who would rather be self-sufficient. Uh, so uh, there are pros and cons with this sort of system, but it does but, help, I think, overall. I was going to say, in, in, the, in the long term, right, would you rather have a system that is in for reinforcing player connection or or reinforcing uh the solo uh ability of current mmo uh let's be, i mean let, i mean let's i mean we're throwing if we're gonna throw i don't want to throw shade but if we're gonna throw shade i mean like do we really need i mean other than the other players in the groups do we really need to have any like you and i've mentioned it before in the show like multiplayer and mmos is just a fancy word to say here's some grouping content <laughs> yeah like yeah, my personal opinion is quite biased as i'm very much in favor of this sort of grouping behavior and enforced grouping uh which is why i'm kind of looking forward to things like pantheon and ashes of creation and uh, chronicles now, of Valeria because now, now kiss it. but like on the other hand i do see the allure of not always wanting to go and interact with people when you're logging into a game. Sometimes you just want some time with yourself. And this, like, I think these games will allow it. It's just going to make it a lot more difficult. Yeah. Because like, you can go out and do all the things. It's just going to take forever if you have to craft all of your own stuff, go out and harvest all the stuff so you can craft the stuff, so you can go out and do the stuff and just basically do the whole cycle yourself. That's not to say I think one day you can be like, I'm going to go chop down logs. Just that's my day. Chop down logs. And the next day I'm like, I'm going to go in town and, and work the logs. And then that, and you could probably be sufficient in that if you want to go that route. Right. It's just a lot longer of a cycle. You can't just yeah. be like, I'm going to go and I'm going to be a crafter. I'm going to be really, really good at this. You kind of go from that whole, like, I'm going to specialize and, and focus being the best that I can in this to I'm going to do all of it. But I have to be okay with not being the best because I'm not putting all of my time into that one thing. That one thing, yeah. I will. I will say this. Uh, I mean, I. I. At least with the the. Uh, at least with uh, Pantheon and and Ashes of Creation, those are two very. 
high fantasy worlds where I th- believe Chronicles of Lyria is very um it's still a fantasy world just more not as high fantasy like like it's not going to be it's definitely not a high fantasy environment like there is magic in the game as far as i know if i remember it like but it's not rare rare. yeah Yeah. it's not you have to find a way to awaken it or it has to be something innate but it it is an extremely rare ability it's not going to be like there's magic everywhere yeah, no, it's not like I like and I'd be raising a staff over here and be like, I am a powerful wizard. I mean you get could in touch do with that. your wizard. Yeah, I guess <laughs> that's how it's gonna lock. You find me in the cave and you gotta get in touch. I'll be the wizard in the cave. It's gotta get in touch with me and be like, here you go. It's dangerous Magic. to go alone. Take this. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so terrible just like still me in caves i don't know why i'm just an old guy in a cave but here i am uh but i will say i know pantheon's gonna have uh dungeons and and raiding and the same for ashes of creation that is still going to have dungeons and raiding and then and, and the pvp like it's still gonna have those things uh i think with ashes of creation um like we said earlier with, with the pantheon is very group focused even in, in the outside questing world uh ashes of creations i believe is going to be the same thing where you're still going to have dungeons but the interesting fact that d- dungeons may change and grow and not be there if you didn't work on one node and then versus another so i'm kind uh, of going to see how they do that especially with the dynamic aspect of it like are there going to be things that people will miss out on or that things will that they'll build that we'll never see or like how is that all going to play into it so it's kind of be neat to see how that unfolds yeah and 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 stick to their guns on it like that's that's going to be my favorite part to actually be like hey server a never got to see this dungeon but server b did because they they played with this node but server b never saw this content because and like to me as a creator that'd be so interesting like this almost like open end storybook where it's like we we even though it's like some people only got to see part of your content but it's really interesting to see how people are affecting the world just to see what they can change and what they can manipulate and maybe it's people going out and finding like there was a dungeon there and then trying to go and siege that node and hold it and <laughs> causing these massive land wars but like you don't know there's a dungeon there that would be kind of awesome to see if we could actually have that happen right <laughs> all right let's move on to crowfall the uh an interesting take on Yet again, uh, focusing on multiplayer, uh, this one a little different. Uh, I would say probably a mix somewhere between uh, the first three games we talked about, but not in an entirely different way. The way Crowfall works is that there's a the main world that you're in, and that's where you're going to build your town, your 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 castle. Uh, and and have your crafters and such and so forth and and your world and that's what you're going to build up where the gameplay takes place is in these i don't want to say game worlds but only like these game worlds where these questing worlds will open up and the rules will be like almost like a board game everyone will be different will have different time frames but that's where you're going to get your resources to bring back out with you um, so you may go into one and say, hey, listen, I want to be on this campaign that's only three months long um, and I'll be in that content for three months. And then and there'll be a different thing. Like it's going to be three months. Uh, there's no winter. It's constantly summer, but it's going to be um, two massive siege battles. And there's going to be PvP involved between the two zones where uh, one it could be a six month long campaign, but there's no PvP. It's PvP, uh, PvE only, but you're reversing uh, the harshness of winter encroaching and the lack of resources. So you're going to have to use some of the resources you're gathering to keep yourself sustained for the six months, but why you're still trying to gather. And that's really Crowfall. What they're trying to add is this. The game will always throw you different little... The questing is never going to be the same. It's always going to be these different game worlds where you go into to take stuff out to build up the overworld. Um... It's gonna have destructible environments. The, the if you hit the wall, it'll the wall will crumble. Uh, they're planning siege weapons and PvP. Um, I think their big sell here is their destructible environments and of course like that, that ever changing game world. It's very rare nowadays to see an MMO change on the fly, 
unless there's a big game breaking bug. Um, so to me, that's kind of a neat concept. It's, uh, I say, Hey, listen, I, I, I don't know if I want to do that six month campaign, that three month campaign with PVP sounds more of my type. I'm going to go do that for three months and see if that's up more up my alley. Or they may have like a one week campaign where you're only in there for one, <laughs> one week and, and you can hop right back out. Um, so it's going to be a totally different concept on how a multiplayer game is played because it's the rules will always change the concepts will always change the people you see the you, you, you might not be with the same people uh and you can see that right now that i mean people are streaming crowfall and alphas are live and you can see that combat and you can see their character types and uh, I believe characters are unique to each race and class. Like there's centaurs and 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 all sorts of unique character classes and races and all sorts of things. So, Crowfall is really taking like the high fantasy and and really going about it in a neat way. And the PvP looks really good. Other than that, um, it's not like I said yet again. It's not your typical MMO. It's not going to be like quest hubs and dungeons. It's these game worlds you go into. There may be a dungeon in that game world that you have to go get resources out of, but it is very PvP and PvE focused, but in a, a different way. So, uh, it's I'm a cool concept. Curious. I'm kind of curious to see how they pull this off. Um, I think it's going to be really cool as kind of a test bed for different things. And I'm kind of actually surprised that other companies haven't really done this yet um, because I think it's a really cool idea in that you can test a whole bunch of different gameplay mechanics and different worlds uh, and different themes and different ideas and see kind of what players like. Uh, especially, I, I know we had uh, EQ Next and Landmark, and Landmark was kind of a, a pre, a, a testing it bed for a lot of stuff that they wanted to do in EQ Next, uh, whether it was with the building and, and being able to create uh, land or text, test out the technology, test out the gameplay, and while neither game ended up actually fulfilling any of the rules that they intended to uh, and about, both eventually were died. Uh, Crowfall kind of seems similar in that it's, it's a really good way that they can test a lot of these things and if something proves to be really, really popular, they could almost make an entire game based on that or they could have it as a more prominent part of their game. We've talked many times on this podcast about how 14 does really, really well with trying new things, but even though that they try a lot of new things like Vermilion and Palace of the Dead and Eureka, they don't really have the speed or the tools, I think, to constantly pump out this content. We might get a little bit every six months to a year, let's say, uh, with some new content that's completely new to, to most MMOs. Uh, so having a project do this from the beginning where they're just like, okay, hey guys, we're going in, we're going to try a whole bunch of stuff. And we're just going to basically keep throwing stuff at the wall and go is really, really interesting. Just hopefully we'll see a lot of, of good things come from it and allow them to come through and uh, build up a really, really cool game based on what players are having a lot of fun with. Plus uh, have that freedom to constantly create content really, really, really fast. Yeah. And I, and I and I will say this, uh, especially in like in terms of fourteen, like fourteen in in terms of how they sometimes because we don't have like a a beta server or, or a like here beta test this for us. Like they don't do beta sessions and and the way they kind of test things in house and then they they push it onto us. Um, I don't know if you know if you keep your eyes open, you see you see how they test things in other. What they'll do is they'll combine other things and test in other formats. Like Diadem was clearly a big test for how we were eventually going to come to Eureka and, and clearly they pulled stuff out of palace of the dead and added it to, into, into the world of uh, Eureka. Uh, it'd be the same concept. Like they also test things during holiday events. Like for example, the, the dun like the, the maze system with the two, like that's a cool, like in, during the uh, um, Valentine day event, like, that's a cool system. It was it was a cool new like hey you know stay together. It was mixing some stuff we saw in raids and and adding this this extra like beam between us and stuff like that. So I would suspect that they also use holidays to test stuff on us <laughs> to, to see how it'll work for future content. Um, but yet again, the speed at what they pump that out is is isn't as fast as it could be with something like Crowfall. 
something I, <laughs> this game I've, I think I've tested now on and off for the last few years project Gorgon uh, or Gorgon uh, this game is made by a husband and wife team that's it there's no there's not a lot of people on the team it is literally the husband and wife they are both uh, MMO veterans they both worked on various games including EverQuest 1 uh, uh, Star Wars uh, 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 sorry, yeah, Star Wars Galaxies, uh, Guild Wars One, like all sorts, of, like a lot of the landscape of MMOs. Project Gorgon it literally is a an old school MMO, just built now. It's got old school graphics. It's it's got an in game like notepad that you can write down notes because you're if you read a block, it may give you a, a clue to a, an epic quest that you don't know or a spell you may learn and you like everything is a leveling up like you swing your sword you level up and you'll see a bar and you'll unlock new abilities for sword use equip a shield i have pad of paper with me yeah you never know when you're <laughs> start quest uh and this game was free and i remember when i was doing uh, evercast i was talking about project gorgon and uh, I had my co-host play, and they're like, "This is old as hell." I was like, "No, it's new. It's brand new, and it, and it was, and still is. Uh, it's currently on. It, it was the MMO that almost wasn't, and and kind of like people came up and rallied behind it, and and helped. And this thing is now on Steam early access. You can go drop money and go get this. And it offers all sorts of things: uh, puzzles, random traps, and bosses that will curse you, literally curse you. I remember. I had one of my old former co-hosts playing with me and he and the starting dungeon of all places like you start off in one of the dungeons and one of the starting things on the screen it flashes red it says do not go further if you fight this by yourself you probably won't win and it could probably put a curse on you that it can't be uncured and he went and fought it anyway and it was a cow and he's like how hard could a cow be to kill there is no cow level well he was cursed and turned into a cow. <laughs> I mean, I don't see any negative here. And and you level and then the best part was there was no cure for the cow. Like you were a cow and you were cow armor. There was a specific armor for cows. And cows had specific attacks. And you could milk the cow. And if you milk the cow, you got a glass of milk and that gave you a buff for leveling. <laughs> What I'm saying is, is that oh, project, support class. yeah, right. It was essentially what what it was. It was a support class, and it was so interesting because Project Gorgon's offering things like lycanthropy, where you'll be a human for most, and it's got moon phases, and there'll be a part of the part of the month where you're just a, now I'm a werewolf and I'm gonna do werewolf things, and you can't control that. That and and there's maybe a cure for that. There may not be a cure for that. Yeah, work out or or no the cow. Listen, cow is permanent. There was no changing from cow. If you were the cow, yeah. If you know, uh, sudden sudden cow, (laughs) sudden cow. All of a sudden, moo. (laughs) It's utter chaos. (laughs) Uh, just I'm sorry about that joke. That's bad. (laughs) That was terrible. It was bad. I'm apologize about that joke. But our standards. But the starting island, so they redid the starting dungeon, now it's a starting island, and that island, I, if I remember correctly, has, like, stones, and you have to write, like, a specific order and find, like, the ones on, like, the north, southeast, and I won't ruin it for you, but there is an in-game notepad where you can write notes, and there's puzzles and codes, and it's it's fun to play an MMO where you have to use your thought process and ask players and help players with questing, because you're like, hey, I've read this quest a couple times, and and... You don't hear that anymore. Like very few times. Like uh, Final Fantasy has a couple of those things where it's like, here's a picture, go do this, and you're like, oh yeah. And I get, it gets me excited. I'm like, I'm looking for it. I kind of know where it is. And uh, I don't know. Like Project Gorgon is just. I'm telling you, it's not a pretty game, but I've always been one of those people behind. A game doesn't have to look good to be fun. Like if the if the mechanics are good, it helps a lot though. It, it sometimes yeah but sometimes i think fun try, like out out like outweighs looks like like i i i listen if you if you gave me punch out i'll still play punch out like old school like nes punch out 
for fucking hours. Like, no, like, uh, I will. Now, I can go play Wii Punch Out. Still Punch Out. But. I mean, I'm playing EQ1, so. Just, exactly. And that's what it is. It's just Project Oregon. It's just. And, and, and it's not bad. I believe if you buy into it now, you get like three months of uh, VIP access. I, I don't remember if they're going to charge a monthly fee for it or if they're going to be like, there's going to be VIP versus non-VIP access. And and, and actually, uh, the, one of the cool things is that talking to NPCs matters. Talk to every NPC, even if they don't give you a quest. They still can be your friend. And if you befriend them, guess what? Sometimes they teach you spells. Sometimes they teach you a skill. Sometimes they give you discounts. And sometimes they're murderous animals that just want to kill all humans. Sometimes they will milk your udder if you're overabundant with milk. It just depends. Just depends. But last on our list isn't a new MMO. Uh, it's just an expansion for one. Uh, one that's been around for an ungodly amount of years, but not EverQuest. About like 14 or so. Oh god, it's been that long. Ugh. Not yeah. You know. Hey, EQ1, EQ1's coming up on 20 years next 20 year. 20 years. I'll think about that for a second. Uh, World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth. Uh, is it doing anything new in terms of its questing? Eh, I mean, I hear the questing's fun. It's got two massive continents, that, one specific to the Horde, one specific to the Alliance, and that's cool. If you're a big like lore nerd for that game like I was, or still kind of am, like I'm like... I know those islands, and I can't wait to, you know. Uh, but the, they're doing two really cool, interesting things. One is the island expeditions. Uh, you set out on island expeditions to conquer an ever-changing array of enemies, environments, and objectives. You battle in groups of three as you race against cutting uh, rival intruders or enemy players. So it's this thing where it's like you could be thrown onto a, an island, and all of a sudden it's PvP, and you have to fight for the resources on the island to help bolster your crew and your gear and... Or it's it's PVE content, and it's just kind of like a three player. Then you know it'd be three player versus three player, and and they're just charting these uncharted islands out in the middle of the sea. And I think that's kind of a cool concept for an MMO, and it's it's kind of a neat content, like kind of a new focal like focus for them. Uh, the other thing was the warfronts, where it's these battlefields on a large scale, twenty player cooperative warfront to claim key strategic locations on the new islands and uh you capture resources you build your factions forces and lead the charge as your troops lay siege to objectives and fight the enemy commander to claim victory in a new pve mode inspired by the classic rts battles this to me is so fucking cool because <laughs> i'm such a huge nerd for the warcraft rts and it's cool that they're kind of going back and saying like we can kind of do this in the mmo and give players 20 players cooperatively to work together to create essentially like you know you know peons and, and little warriors and stuff to go out and help capture and lay victory to you know you know strategic points on maps and i think that's a cool way to kind of handle you know it's pve but to me it's almost like a pvp mode if they if they could do this with players and on a massive scale that'd be great That'd be kind of cool. So I, I, I'm excited just to, to kind of see these Warfront stuff. I know they're also going to add, I didn't add it on the notes, but I know they're going to also add pet dungeons because they do like pet battles, which is kind of like Pokemon. So I'm going to have to hold dungeons dedicated to pet battles. <laughs> Still better than Vanilla. I think that, listen, if they would have said, hey, we're adding pet battles to Final Fantasy XIV and not Vermillion, I would have been way more excited about it. I don't know if they decided to be like, hey, you could take your pets and then go into doing dungeons with your pets. That'd be kind of fun. You mean like our chocobos? Like we were supposed to do their chocobos? No, no, I mean like taking like your minions and going and running to minion dungeons. I would do that. That would be kind of cool. I, I, you know, you're doing well now. But if see, WoW did it first, so now Final Fantasy can't do it because Final Fantasy 10. Well, that's not true. Sometimes Final Fantasy kind of looks at WoW and takes things. Yeah, Battle for the Horde. Yeah. Or Revenge of the Horde, sorry. Revenge. Revenge. Of the Horde. Revenge. Yeah, the Horde. They're no, very, very angry about that. World to PUBG. But it is. I didn't want to start some beef. Gonna milk these funds. I didn't want, yeah, that's gonna be. Yeah, we 
yeah, there was a bunch of cow puns. So, and that's it. That's the current. Like, and like, like we said, this this isn't the. This was the short list. <laughs> the list was a lot longer than this. We we kind of cut it down. Uh, there's a couple of MMOs we didn't mention. There was uh, the, uh got air, and I can't remember the actual name. It was like. Arsenal Ascent Infinite Realms. Uh, yeah, Ascent Infinite Realms, where it is a high fantasy Korean MMO mixed with steampunk. So there's steampunk airship battles. And there's airship fucking battles. <laughs> like legit like, aerial fighting. Yeah, legit aerial fighting. Like on steam flying machines and dragons and, and you fight dragons in the sky with uh, like cool concept and 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 it's going to be buy to play when it launches here in the states because a lot of korean companies are like make it better so uh those are just some you know some of the stuff that's coming this way uh but yet again it's you know i'm I'm happy to see that there is a focus in pushing players into doing content with each other um it seems that's going to be the land. Like, it's almost, you know how they always say, like, things come back around again, like 80s fashions back in all of a sudden. People wearing our shoulder pads and shit and, like, and hammer pants or whatever. But, like, uh, <laughs> it's almost the same with MMOs, right? Like, we, we had this long stint of make it solo friendly, make it solo friendly. But now it looks like things are coming back around to let's make it, play, you know, let's make it group focused again. And I think part of this was more like it wasn't so much that people were uh, focused a lot of solo it to not doing group stuff. A lot of it was uh, a bunch of games getting stuck on. Uh, we have to be like, wow, we have to do the theme park style stuff. We have to yeah. be, these are the concepts that make an MMO and we have to hit all of these boxes in order for us to be good. And everyone tried to hit the same success as wow, but they realized that, you can't get that same success when the market is older. Sure, EQ1 had a huge market share because uh, it was one of the very few MMOs in the market when it came out. Same with WoW, there was so little on the market and so little polish to that level as well. It had a huge customer base. Uh, but then as the years came on, we had more and more games come out and a lot of them were better, but they didn't have the market share. They didn't have the people and the players kind of splintered into more niche categories. So I think we're kind of now at the point where we understand, yes, all of our games are going to be very niche. We are not going to have massive populations. So let's build something that's going to focus and capture a part of that market. And we'll kind of be a really, really good game for that market and focus on that rather than try to be the next big massive thing which just keeps failing again and again and age of conan and warhammer and warhammer and all these <laughs> why other did games you that... say that wait hold on why did you say that twice don't say that twice i still have that collection wasn't there two warhammers no there was one. Oh no there was two age of conans there was two age of conans the one it was age of conan and then they did like our soft reboot of age of conan and it didn't do so hot the second reboot. like it didn't do so hot the first time it did even worse the second time warhammer online though lasted a while it just it never had expansions and then but the problem was it did, that eh? ea it's ea ea was but ea pulls plugs on mmos fairly quickly though unless it's star wars right but we have a whole history of these like we have star wars galaxies and the matrix online and dcuo and uh, what else no, do we well, have off of last DC, year? No, no, DC Universe Online still going. Is DC still going? What was the one that got pulled? Going. Uh, Marvel... Uh, City of Heroes. City of Heroes got pulled, yep. City of Heroes and City of Villains got pulled. Uh, Tabula Rasa. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. anybody, anybody show of hands? Oh, How many people play Tabula Rasa? Show of hands? Just me? I wasn't there. It wasn't great shit. <laughs> <laughs> reason, reason why I was pulled. We can keep going back because we got like Vanguard and uh, what's that other one? Um, Camelot? Dark Ages Camelot? Dark Ages Camelot. I think that one may still be going. I'm Maybe. not sure. I'm pretty sure they were talking about a, like a reboot of that one as well. Uh, a Camelot Unlimited or, Cam or a Camelot Unchained. Unchained. Yeah. Which is coming out. Yes. I didn't have it on the list because. It just it, it, it's not, not that it wasn't doing anything new. It is very, very player focused, but it is essentially just a PvP MMO. Like it is literally a PvP MMO. 
that's all you do is massive siege. Like if that is your jam, if PVP is your jam, Camelot and Chain is going to be your jam. Like go check that out. Um, I I have a friend, dear friend, and I'll, I'll give him a shout out, Zube, who uh, I, uh, that's his online person like name, uh, who went to his wife and said, I love I love Dark Ages of Camelot. Camelot and Chain is coming out. Honey, can can I do the top tier Kickstarter uh, amount? And she said yes. And I remember that amount was like fifteen hundred dollars, and it, she and listen, like both have great jobs. Like it wasn't like, and he went and asked oh, permission. I know, I, I know both of them. Yeah, I mean, dude, he asked for like he did the right thing. He said, "Honey, you're gonna do." This? And she said, "I was like, you let him do that. It's fifteen hundred dollars." She said yes. I have other conversations after this, but <laughs> with him or me, because. Are you, did you well, listen? I don't want to know how much money you dropped. Not, on not podcast. So. All right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. So I, I guess this is to, to kind of start wrapping things up. Um, yeah, this is kind of a, a different type of stuff or type of uh, a podcast for than what we kind of traditionally do. Um, if there's any games specifically you want us to kind of focus on that we mentioned or that we missed, uh, and this, uh, let us know. Uh, we can take a little bit of a deeper dive into some of these if you're interested, or if you want us to cover something else that's not there. Um, yeah, let us know what you thought about this. Send us an email, send us a tweet. Yeah, let us know. Uh, it, it's like, yet again, this was just because the Final Fantasy news was so light that we didn't want to not give you a show. <laughs> I mean, trust me, we could have taken the day off and just drank, <laughs> but we decided that we'd drink with you and do this. <laughs> so, as we take sips. Uh, no, this honestly, no. yeah. Oh, is that what that is? Shit, that's actually honey one. Um, uh, <laughs> but uh, it it doesn't mean that we like we aren't a uh, Final Fantasy fourteen podcast. It's just that, like we said, uh, the the landscape is changing, and you know, Shin and I have been around long enough to know that uh, it's good to keep your eyes on what the future may hold because you don't know what's going to change. Um. You know, knock on wood, Final mm-hmm. Fantasy lasts for years and years to come. But, you know, worst case scenario, there could be another, you know, I'm not going to say there's ever going to be a WoW killer, uh, <laughs> but you never know when an MMO may come out and the population may split. And, you know, there's always that talk, and Chin and I have always said that, like, when more and more MMOs come out, you're, you're going to find players that may play Final Fantasy now, but tomorrow may be playing uh, Chronicles of Lyria or ashes of creation and your player base in your current game takes a dip and takes a dip and then takes a dip and it's not the same player base and the friends you once knew play and i'm not saying it like to be depressing it's just you know i've play play mmos long enough and <laughs> you're like where did my friends go and then all of a sudden they're like they're 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 knocking at your door and they're like hey you want that try this new drug <laughs> try this new drug <clears throat> I know because that's how Shin started playing Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh speaking of new drugs, we could be yours simply by joining our FC over on Gilgamesh, Domina de Umbra. It's all the fun of drugs without any of the uh bad side effects. Legal or medical and connotations. I mean, it could be medical. There's a doc, at least one doctor out of five would recommend us. You could probably bribe someone. (laughs) It's probably not like a natural doctor. (laughs) Listen, it's probably a guy in a cave. (laughs) It might not be a medical doctor, but we could get a doctor. I'm pretty sure we know people who are doctors or have doctors. It's it's dangerous to go alone. Join them. Can we hire an old guy just to say he's in a doctor and just to recommend us? Probably well, we already had you. Oh, is that <laughs> all right? Fair, fair, <laughs> good enough. <laughs> fair, I like it. You can check us out. <laughs> I'm gonna recommend a bunch of shit right now, but you can check us out here Fridays at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. Uh, just we started a little later today because work stuff and whatnots, but it's okay. But normally nine. 
Uh, <clears throat> you can find our recorded stuff on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Uh, if there is a, a podcasting app or podcasting thing that you're like, hey, I wish you guys were on this because this is my main thing, let us know. We'll throw ourselves on there. We want to be in your ears and mo- we want to be in all the places. So let us know. Tell us what's up. Tweet us. Email us. And you can email us. Or you can find all that information at www.maelstromradio.com. That's our uh, website where you can find our shows and blurbs. And if you missed our Choose Your Own Adventure, please go go read it. It's over there someplace. And uh, right? It's up there. Up there with all those choices you d- everybody didn't make. So uh, find out find out what was missed. You can also email us at show at maelstromradio.com. You can find our Discord on our website. I'm not going to read out the Discord. We don't have one of those cool fancy Discords. Unless Discord wants to give us a cool fancy Discord. Or we can be like discord.com forward slash maelstromradio. I don't know if we we'll get it. You can find us on Twitter at twitter.com. That's at maelstrom underscore radio. Tweet us. Send us tweets. We like tweets. We'll interact with you. Send us photos of yourself, maybe. Send us a selfie. Chili, send me a selfie. <laughs> Chili will do it. Chili will be the only person that sends us a selfie. To be fair. Maybe Paul. Paul sent us a selfie. Oh, no, Paul's not too big about showing himself on the uh, interwebs. It, it might not be himself. True. He'll send us something. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Twitter, listen, Twitter doesn't have rules. They kind of just let things go. Uh, you can find us on Facebook.com forward slash Maelstrom Radio. Uh, you know, when Facebook's not stealing your information, come check it out. <laughs> We promise we're not selling your information. I can't speak for them. And of course, you can find us here on twitch.tv forward slash Maelstrom Radio. Thank you all for joining us for the 75th episode. A little different, a little out of our, our, our spectrum of what we normally talk for the last 74 episodes. I promise you next week, more than likely, we'll be back on Final Fantasy 14, back in our old, back on our bullshit, as they like to say on the internet. And that's okay. Shin, uh, you want to go ahead and uh, say goodbye to everybody? Got nothing more to add tonight. All right. Sounds good to uh, me, sir. For, for the 14 till C swallows all. <laughs> we'll throw a little bit of that. We've got to throw back a little bit. Yeah. Get back. Uh, and Shin's probably going to log in. By the way, if you are live here with us and you are in Umbra, please go log in right now. And if you're level 70, come join us for oozing your maps. We're going to go. I'm gonna go. I'm sorry, get me a fucking golden whisker. That's gonna happen. I want me a little derpy fish man. <clears throat> so, uh, let's meet Chin. Derpy fish man got you. Uh, you want derpy fish man. I, <laughs> you're lucky I don't name the old guy in the cave derpy fish man. <laughs> I don't know. That's his little apprentice. Yeah. Uh,. Fucking, I just wanted to let you know, fucking Ashes of Creation just liked her tweet. <laughs> just My saying. Is helping. <laughs> Next week, sponsored by Ashes of Creation. <laughs> no, not, well, maybe, I don't know. If you want to give us money, please, please contact us at <laughs> show at maelstromradio.com. Anyway, <laughs> muting shit. We will we will never get money that way. Not a. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. Yeah. F- listen, if a beer company wants to sponsor us, hell yes. Find us, please. We will take beer. Anyway, thank you all for joining us for the 75th episode of Maelstrom Radio. We are 25 episodes. That's two five away from 100. We have no idea what the hell we have planned for that show, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a long one, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be super duper crazy, just like episode 50 was. This, remember, this is year two of Maelstrom Radio. We've only gotten we've only gotten crazy. <laughs> so with that being said, I know Shin thanks you all. Thank you for listening to us blabber on about other things. But next week, as always, till sea swallows all, keep listening. Maelstrom Radio is a production of maelstromradio.com, Blackfire Media Productions. Final Fantasy XIV and Eorzea are trademarks of Square Enix. Opening theme provided by Benjamin Anthony James. 
You can find more of their music over at soundcloud.com forward slash Ben773. Our outro is provided by Soda. You can find more of their music over at soundcloud.com forward slash Soda. Views and opinions expressed on this episode are of those of Males from Radio and their hosts, and do not reflect the views and opinions of Square Enix. And until C swallows all, keep listening.